was uh, at the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago um, doing a lot of um, kind of like street evangelists, kind of talking with people on the street and, and just really had a heart for um, kind of the down and out, like these people that really you couldn't bring them into a church. Um, none of the churches around there, they'd feel welcome. And so just really had a heart for um, even having a place where people could come in um, and have a safe place to come get loved and, and experiencing God's presence really. And it was at the same time that just really began to get a heart for prayer um, through the 24-7 movement. Um, we had a prayer room on campus and um, just got burned for that and had like this vision of like a kind of urban monastery, kind of a bunch of people living together in community praying and having a coffee shop outreach. That was in 2001. One day somebody said, hey, have you heard about the Bridge Street House of Prayer? Um, it's two miles from your house. When we came down here in the first night, they're like, oh, and we're opening up this coffee house across the street. And it was like, this thing that I've been praying for, um, we walked right into it. And you know, our prayer was just, well, God, as, as far as you want us to go, um, we're on this. And so it's just been an adventure of just kind of the wild goose chase. Uh, you know, chasing after God's vision for this and trying to be faithful to that, so. I was working at a coffee shop in my college. Um, I graduated from Spring Arbor University and um, I just had a kind of a heart for just ministering to people through coffee and just that atmosphere, like more of the relaxed atmosphere. And then um, definitely had a heart for prayer too. So a friend of ours said, you know, there's some people starting a coffee shop, that outreach, and just got really excited when we came down here and um, just really clicked, so. Um, I think it definitely started off slow because we've been here since day one, you know, and we were open without even serving coffee or anything yet because we didn't have the health permit, but we were still open. So um, there's certain people like Jeff and um, Thomas and Cindy that have come around since the beginning and um, we actually interviewed Jeff um, just recently and he was saying, you know, you guys are my family and um, he just, he's been here for like a year plus and just every night just hanging out and um, we see people around the neighborhood that come in pretty consecutively and it, it just becomes their family and it becomes um, just a place where they're known, where their name is known and, and they're known as a person. One of the things that we've really seen is that this is a place where as people come in, I mean, you, you see them just kind of open up. Um, over time and it's just that consistency of just <clears throat> loving them. People come in and they say I leave changed every time um, and just I think that's that's the biggest way that I mean it's not any like big huge all of a sudden instantaneous thing but it's the gradual just being faithful um, you know and, and being consistent and, and yeah like Laura was saying just see that just really um, that those relationships building and and that uh, God's heart is just really being displayed there. The way that the Pavi at Pavilion actually started was uh, 30 days of prayer and fasting, and, and we actually have a journal from this time. And one of the things that, one of the words somebody got uh, that they believe God said was that this is going to be like the widow's oil, where it'll be poured out and it'll be like coffee pots that never empty. Um, and so one of the things that we absolutely believe is that God will provide, um, that it doesn't have to be through um, like, you know, just begging for coffee or anything. It'll be, um, we'll, we'll be out of coffee. We'll maybe have coffee for like a week, you know, or something like that. We, we see it dwindling, and so um, we'll pray. Um, every single time it's been provided for, whether it's, it's right on um, like the day or like the next week that we're, you know, somebody will just randomly call, um, say, hey, I've got a case of coffee. Um, there was one time where um, we're about ready to run out of coffee and Ryan actually gets this text message from a guy he hasn't talked to in about a year and a half saying, hey, I've got a case of coffee. Do you guys want it? Yeah, and it's just like perfect timing. We've had, um, and, and that's just one thing that we believe in that we, we really share and we want that to be a testimony of this place that God provides. Um, we have a lot of people coming in here who, um, who are in need um, and we want to invite them into a relationship with a provider.
Actually, I came here with a bunch of friends. Probably not the proper friends I should be hanging out with. And I just, like, got to an argument with a bunch of the people here. And then at the end, uh, one of the people here just looked at me and said, you know what, tonight I'm going to pray for you. And this made me decide to keep coming back. You know, like, these people actually care kind of about my life outside of, you know, the free coffee shop. I, I kind of quit drugs before I came here. And I, when I came back to Grand Rapids, I started getting in with the wrong crowd again. And like, the crowd that was only leading downward. And then one of them was just like, you know, let's go get a free cup of coffee. You know, here I am. The one of these guys that probably go nuts. They kept me in check all these months. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been open for over a year and a half now, and I've been here ever since. <laughs> I was the first customer here when it first opened up. Really? Yep. And I'm glad they're here. I'm glad I have some place to come, to come and be peaceful. And not deal with all the drama out there in the world. Like my roommates and other things like that. They're always constantly drunk and I don't have to deal with that. I come here to relax. I come here to listen to music, to pray, to be on a computer, or just associate with people. And that's what it's good for. I'm glad they're here for me. For all of us. Wow. Yeah. We all deserve a place to call our own. Yeah. And as long as God is alive, we are here together. And I love them, and I love everyone else here. Thank you for being my friend. Uh...